Good morning, guys. What's up? Bonafide Hustler here with... Tanya, Thrifty Treasures. All right, we got Thrifty Treasures in the house today, and today we're going to be talking about how to make money from garage sales, the planning part of the episode. So <clears throat> anyway, I'm the Bonafide Hustler. <clears throat> I think you guys know my channel. You're here right now. Let's talk about the other person that's on the screen. We got Tanya from Thrifty Treasures, and she is the first link down below, so definitely go sub to her. We're going to be delving into some really good stuff on how we plan through our how we plan to make money at garage sales, right? So hopefully there'll be a second episode and a third one. Maybe I'll have a different guest, maybe Tanya again. But basically, this episode is going to be covering um, how we plan, all right, to become profitable on the day of the garage sale. So. Anyways, um, I want to make sure that my mic sounds good. So let's make sure that happens. We have a feed. It's a live feed right now. If you're seeing the little live button, um, you can go ahead and comment and uh, ask questions and all that kind of stuff. I've been garage selling for about 11 years maybe, right? I think my first, I, I've been a hustler for 12 years, but my first year was like strictly reselling bikes from thrift stores um, and stuff like that on Craigslist. So I really started figuring out the garage sale game about 11 years ago. How about you, Tanya? I've actually been doing it since about 2000. So, um, you know, I started just kind of small, finding stuff around the house, like books and, you know, just um, small items that I could ship. So, and then it just grew into the garage sales. That's good. Um, where are you? Uh, you are, you reside in Texas, right? And we're not too far from each other, about maybe three or four hours, but where, where are you from? Uh, Houston. I'm actually in League City. So probably about 30 minutes from Galveston. Okay, 30 minutes from Galveston. And mm -hmm. if no one knows what Galveston is, that's the seashore of Texas <laughs> or part of the Gulf. And the water is sometimes brown or most of the, most of the time is it brown. I know. Um, that's the only But it's not brown from like a yeah. bad way. It's brown because it's just churning the sand real good. So Right. Yeah, if you go out like I don't even know how far. What do you say? Not like about far. a mile? Yeah. Yeah, not very far. Yeah. It would be, be pretty blue. Really nice. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, so here we have Thrifty Treasures. Her link is down below. Go check that out. And your channel has almost 4,000 subscribers, and you do ride-along videos to garage sales. Um, you show your finds all the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, so definitely go check out her channel. She's active. You're always uploading stuff, right, Tanya? <laughs> yes, I love it. I have so much fun with it. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. So, you know, when people, I think going to garage sales and thrift stores and all that kind of stuff is one of the easiest ways that you can make side money or even full-time money uh, without having a boss or any of that junk, uh, someone looking over your shoulder. Right. But when you take matters into your own hands, <clears throat> it's really important to plan to make your day the best day possible, meaning to where you can find the most stuff, you can make the most money, and make it worth your time, right? To where you really see it as a completely amazing opportunity. Tanya, do you um, ever go many Saturdays without garage selling, or is this something that you do all the time? No, that's what I do on Saturday mornings. That's where I will be all of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really the reality of it because what happens, and this is kind of like the way I think, and I think a lot of people probably think the exact same way, is if you don't go out garage selling, do you ever have this, this thought process, Tanya? Do you know where I'm going with this? Uh, the fear of missing out. <laughs> yeah, the fear of missing out. And like, you know what, you have to take what you would have done instead of garage selling. Let's say sleep in. Um, maybe it's... I don't know, breakfast with a friend, right? Um, yeah. It could be working out. But you got to take what you would have done and ask yourself, am I willing to, you know, give up garage sales or the money I would have made garage selling for that activity? Do you ever think like that, Tanya? Oh, always. I mean, it's going to have to be something pretty darn important. Like, I don't <laughs> know, my kids having an activity or something, that would probably be the only reason I would miss or if, of course, I was sick or something like that. And even then, I would probably still try and go out. <laughs> yeah, I was sick, uh, semi-sick like uh, three weeks ago. Not really sick, but just like something, stomach virus. Anyway, and I was still out there and I was still oh, yeah. hustling <laughs> and I was like cranking it out and I just didn't feel that great. But I call it a day around 10 and I was out there at 7. So 7 to 10, I still made it. Um so anyways, yeah, you got to be thinking about those kind of things when you are going garage selling or you are mm -hmm. getting into this game. It, it can get very addicting. Oh, uh, yeah. You can find amazing finds quickly. And uh, it only takes like a couple home runs and you realize like, okay, like that's definitely not worth sleeping in for next weekend. Like if I, that yes. happens again, like that's not worth it. So anyway, yes. <clears throat> um, and if you do sleep in, I think you'll always be wondering like, what could I, what could I have found? Um, oh yeah, all day long. <laughs> 
it, it hurts because like we're part of the, you know you're in the green room you've been there for forever since like the very beginning it seems yeah um and people post their fines right every mm -hmm. saturday and sunday you see what people are finding and then if you sleep in and you see all those fines you're, you're <laughs> got you start you're gonna start thinking like geez exactly what did i miss out on so anyways today we're gonna be talking about you know what you really have to do the day before maybe two days before garage sales come one day before and then the day of all right. right on the next broadcast we're gonna be talking about like what really goes on during the actual day of garage selling but let's talk about the prep before and that's what the show is all about um so one or two days before tanya i think it's important that you know what you kind of want to find like what gets you going tanya like if i asked if people asked me like, what gets me going they would know it's, oh it's bikes and sporting goods and <laughs> random stuff like what gets you going in the morning um, well, definitely jewelry. I've really been uh, getting heavily back into the jewelry lately and um, books. I sell a lot of books. Um, and also, if I can pick up clothes for really cheap, and by really cheap, I mean like probably about a quarter a piece and they're in good condition, um, I'll be taking that stuff to consignment or like shipping it off to swap.com. So I'm just uh, always trying to keep my brain open to the ways of how I'm going to hustle the item that I purchase, right? So if it's gonna to go to consignment, my antique booth, you know, eBay, Amazon, just have to keep it open. And I, and I look for all kinds of things, especially like the taxidermy, I'm always looking for that. Uh, so all kinds of things get me don't going, you, yeah. Don't you have like a bobcat in your booth or something weird like that? I do, it's actually in my eBay room. I've got three deer heads and um, I have a bobcat. <laughs> oh my gosh anyway <laughs> that's pretty neat i'm about to drop a deer into my booth a deer head not a whole deer that would suck um yeah i saw it a, a deer head yeah that's going into <laughs> today this morning um after this call actually um but yeah so you know you have to have your avenues ready that's really important like she said before she's buying an item she's already thinking like where's this thing gonna go where's it best suited for and if it really doesn't have an opportunity then you really don't want to pick it up honestly because those kind of items are sketch, they're long tail, and they might end up in your possession for a long time. They could clutter up your garage, your room, you know, and that's no fun. So um, always kind of figure out where this item's gonna go, where is it best suited for, and try to get into items that could be like multi-channel uh, marketed. Does that make sense, Tanya? You know what I'm talking about, like an item? Yeah, definitely. Like multi -channel. Like a book, like a yeah. book, for example. Book. So I'll list it on eBay, and I might also list that book on Amazon doing Merchant Fulfilled. So um, get more eyeballs on it, right? That's right. So definitely know what you want to find, right? When you go before the day, one or two days before, think about it, go, okay, what gets me really going? Like, what do I really want to find out there? And uh, if you're sitting there going, you know, I just want to find video games and I just want to find, um, you know, bikes and all that kind of stuff. That's great. The only problem is it's a little harder to do <laughs> it, it, because everyone knows about those kind of things now. So you're going to start, start thinking like, what do you know about? What do you care about? What are you really passionate about? And it could be anything as simple as baseball cards to um, sporting member, you know, sporting jackets or whatever, or shoes, boots, whatever. But think of something mm -hmm. other than the most obvious stuff that you could find at a garage sale because the most obvious stuff was where a lot of the competition will be. Right. Um, so if you're going around town only hunting, let's say video games, I mean, you might come across some good ones, but you're also probably going to get beat most of the time because there's just a lot of people that know about it. Right. So, um, let's talk about, um, now knowing your town, right? So one or two days before, now this is something that I think is ongoing. Like Tanya, you, you, you've lived in league city. How long? Oh gosh. Uh, we've been in this house probably for about, uh, 16 years now. Okay, so it's safe to say that you know good I neighborhoods know around City, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, when you go garage sailing, what's the furthest that you kind of go out, Tanya? Well, okay. Now, if it is a Thursday, I am definitely willing to drive a little bit farther because uh, garage sales on Thursdays are few and far in between. So if there is a Thursday sale, say in Pasadena, for example, I might be willing to go ahead and drive on out there and check that out. But really, I live in such a... Um, heavily populated area here that my little area here in Lake City it, on Fridays and Saturdays keeps me busy. I really don't have to uh, do a whole lot of driving anywhere else. Okay. That's good. Um, so me on this, uh, I'm kind of like the same as you. Like if I go a Thursday or Friday, which usually Fridays are okay here in Austin, Texas. But um, if I go like Saturday, I'm always staying somewhere between 10 and 20 miles away from the house. 
Do you on your Saturdays? Do you kind of do ten or twenty away from the house kind um, of thing? Even I'd less say than 10, ten, maybe. Yeah, probably ten. Yeah, there are a lot of opportunities in the big cities, especially like Houston, Texas. I mean, League City is basically on the outskirts of that. Am I right about that? Yes. And Houston's huge. So huge. You got to know your neighborhoods. This is very important, right? The, the the hoods are that's where all the quality is. Don't go to bad neighborhoods. Not even like bad. Just don't go to neighborhoods that don't really pride themselves on buying quality things, um, because no one's gonna find themselves garage shilling in like Fifth Ward or anything like that. <laughs> Eight Mile, right? Like no one's gonna do that. But like, no. <laughs> what I say, well, bad neighborhoods are just pretty obvious. Like they're just neighborhoods that, and a lot of times it comes through experience, like okay, I don't ever get good fines in that neighborhood, so I'm not going there anymore. Right. Um, so anyway, yeah, just stay away from uh, bad neighborhoods. Go to good neighborhoods. Good neighborhoods have people that are willing to spend money, and uh, money is always quality stuff. Now, exactly. let me ask you this, Tanya. What about rich neighborhoods, like really rich neighborhoods? Do you go to those? <laughs> okay, so if there is, um, say there's a bunch of sales going on that day, the richer neighborhoods are definitely going to be the first ones I hit up for sure because like you just said, the chances of them having good quality items are um, are definitely uh, there. So that's going to be one of my first stops for sure. Okay. So you like richer neighborhoods. Now, for me, on a rich neighborhood, like a really, really rich neighborhood, I'm almost like, oh, man, like rich people kind of know what they bought, right? But the good thing about rich people is – they also are very aware of the concept of like not keeping things around and they're not usually hoarders, right? That's so true. Yes. Yeah. They're always about like, all right, like we know we spent $500 on that juicer, but uh, we need to get this thing out of here. So you might be able to pick it up for like a hundred bucks, right? You know, like mm -hmm. they know what they spent, but they also know the concept of no headaches and not keeping things around the house. Like if you go to like rich, rich, rich neighborhoods, look in their garages or you look at how their houses are, like it's really meticulous, right? Am I right about that? I mean, it's just- You're totally right. <laughs> Thinking back, everything that I've seen, yes, definitely. Yeah, always. Um, so yeah, let's all get, become rich people one day. Let's all be meticulous <laughs> and awesome. Um, but yeah, so when you go to rich neighborhoods, you can find great deals. Um, I find sometimes in rich neighborhoods that the people kind of start high Mm -hmm. And then throughout the day, that thing comes down, which sucks right. because it's like, yeah, I'm really going to come back and like, look at your sale. You know, you, no one does that. Like really, I don't, I don't do it, but, right. um, you know, it's just kind of like, sometimes their mentality is that like, I paid 400 for this. So I want to do 200 right now. It's yeah. only eight in the morning. I, have you heard that before, Tanya? Oh yeah, definitely. Only eight in the morning. I'm going <laughs> to wait a little while. So exactly. But on the other side of the spectrum, I've also been to the neighborhoods that um, are a little bit richer and people are really um, giving like um, I've seen them let stuff go for pretty cheap. So you just never know with garage sales. I mean, and that's the fun of it for me getting up in the morning. You just never know what kind of people you're going to run into and uh, what kind of items you're going to pick up. So and that's what makes it fun. And it's even better when the morning's like crisp and perfect and like everything is just right. <laughs> yes. It, always, it also comes down to like your prep, right? We're going to discuss that here in a second. Like your prep really kind of sets your mood, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. You're sitting out there reacting to the morning and like doing all these things that you're not supposed to be doing during garage sale time. It can really set you up for not failure, but just, you know, a day that you might only make like a hundred bucks from, right? Right. So, Tanya, what is reasonable in League City... If you wake up, when do you wake up on a Saturday? I mean, when do you hit your first sale on a Saturday? Let me, let me ask you this question. Um, anywhere from 6.45 to 7 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Okay. So that's early. And then when do you kind of get done with the garage sales on a Saturday? You know, I wrap it up pretty early. Um, usually by 9.30, 10, I'm kind of winding down. And, you know, I'll probably swing by the Goodwill before I run home. <laughs> yeah. So you're not doing, it's not a terrible amount of work, right? Right. Good. The easy work. What is a good Saturday? Let me ask you this. Outside of community-wide garage sales and neighborhood-wide garage sales, which are the best seasons, but outside of those seasons, what is a good what is a good Saturday if you're prepared? What what may, what's that like number out there that you're like, all right, that was worth my time? What what do you think? Like after it's all said and done and it's sold and it's listed and all that, what do you think that number is to you? Like how much money I'm going to make? Yeah. What do you think? Um, you know, anywhere from, you know, maybe two to $300. It's not right? bad for three hours of work and barely any at in the back end too. I mean, some shipping and some pictures, but a lot of times by now with your experience, you kind of know what 
some of this stuff is, right? Like you, you know what right. some of this stuff is worth. Um, and as you get better with the garage sale game, you'll be pulling out your phone way less. <laughs> you'll, be doing, you'll be doing a lot of like on the fly type purchases because it's just experience, right? Yes. So, anyways, so let's talk about, um, so that's how it is in League City. It's pretty interesting. What about a neighborhood wide garage sale time or community wide? And then this is, explain that to the people out there. What is neighborhood wide? And what is community wide for some complete beginners that are like, tuning in right now? Okay, so that is when a neighborhood, I guess probably the HOA or whoever will uh, tell everybody that they'll be having a community sale and then the homeowners can participate if they want to. And usually it's, um, you know, three or four garage sales on one street at a time. And uh, it's so exciting. <laughs> you know, there's traffic everywhere and it is a ton of fun. I love to hit the community sales. And it's definitely time well spent because you can knock out within an hour sometimes upwards of 20. I mean, if you're good, right? Easily, yes. 10, 20, sometimes 30. I mean, because sometimes these communities like really participate. Yes. Like almost every other house, right? Right. And um, I think this it happen too. It'll happen like twice a year. A lot of the times they'll do it in the spring, which April, I was just talking in the chat, it's really, really um, a lot for April. It's the time for the community sales, the neighborhood sales for sure. And also I've noticed um, a lot of them will also do it again in the fall, like around October. Yeah, and that's because we live in Texas and it gets really, really, really hot right <laughs> after April. And it starts calming yes. down right around October-ish and that's when you start seeing them again. Um, but it's different for places like Florida that have a little bit more consistent type weather or maybe California, you know, something where the weather's not so like up and down. Um, yeah. The good thing about Texas is we don't ever get like really, really cold, like <laughs> yes. 30s and ice <laughs> or snow. Yes. So we have garage sales uh, about all year round. It just yeah. thins up pretty decent around December or January, right? Like it, yeah. it gets it's it's noticeable. Yeah. yeah, it's sparse. It's still worth it, but it's sparse. Definitely. Um, so yeah, there are garage sale seasons. And that's something to be cognizant of because if you are in April, like she said, or October, September, you know, when the weather starts turning here in Texas, for example, it's really worth your time to plan. It's important. Like, let's just face it. So anyway, um, let's go into um, manual search for your goods. How often do you manually <clears throat> search for the goods that you want to find? So you said, Tanya, that you wanted to find jewelry. Right. Correct. Um, and what were the other two again? Jewelry. Um, I look for the books. I books. also, yeah, right. and stuff from my antique booth. Yes. Okay. So, do you ever go manual searching on Craigslist? I haven't lately. I have in the past, but um, you know, I feel like from a, a woman's perspective, dealing with people on Craigslist is a little bit more risky than it is, uh, say, for you being a man, right? Having to meet people. If I meet people, it's definitely going to be at the Lake City Police Station. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me back it up a little bit. And do you ever do a manual search for goods while in the garage sale section of Craigslist? Um, do you know what I'm I talking about? Like if you were like okay. searching for books in particular, like lots right. of books. Right, right. Yes. Okay, yes, so you I've do that. that before. Yeah. Not something you do all the time though, right? It's not, but it probably is something I should be doing. Yeah, and it's one of those things that's just part of the toolbox that you can do, right? Manual searching on Craigslist in the garage sales section, which is the, it's on the lead screen, right? Um, it's in the middle of the screen, bottom, like it's in the very middle of the screen. So at least on my Craigslist it is. Yeah. Um, and I am talking about laptop version because on the laptop version, I don't know why, but it, it, things go faster on laptop when you're doing prep. When you're doing it on a phone, it's like smaller pictures and just it, it's just a little different. So... The phone is good for apps, and there's one or two leading apps that you guys got to know about to prep. But let's go backwards and talk about manual searching on Craigslist, maybe off a laptop or something like that. Does it work? Can you make money? Um, back in the day, um, not even really that far ago, maybe a year ago, and every time before that, I've made videos and people are like, oh, but where's your trusty list, you know, and it was this piece of paper. And the funny thing is I have a lot of my trusty lists like saved. Don't know why. Um, but I have them and it's a piece of paper where I actually have done manual searches for stuff that I want to find, whether it's bike, bikes, bicycle, bicycles, uh, camping gear, sporting gear, mm -hmm. uh, antiques, vintage. And you do manual searches on Craigslist in the garage sale section to highlight only the sales that mm -hmm. have those keywords in them. Um, is it efficient? Eh, it takes about an hour or two of prep 
if you want to get a good list going, right? But if you only have, let's say, 30 minutes or an hour on a Thursday night, Friday night, you know, and you're prepping for, let's say, a Friday morning garage sales or a Saturday morning garage sales, Tanya, do you use the app now? You use apps? Oh, yeah. I'm heavily into the apps. Um, and I noticed you mention uh, Yard Sale Treasure Map a lot, the, uh, the blue one on mm -hmm. the um, iPhone. I actually prefer the G Seller one. Uh, That's cool. better than yeah, because to me that one it gives you more information right there. I ha I don't have to click as many, uh, you know, I don't have to move around a lot. All the information is already right there. Have you noticed like with the difference between the two? Well, I don't use G Sealer, but I use. And the funny thing is, I know the owner personally. Like we talk. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll pass along that you like it a lot. Yeah. Now, he's always looking for ways to improve it too. So if we can get some feedback to him, he can build it really awesome. But the other app that we're talking about is Yard Sale Treasure Map. It looks like this, right? And I know G Sailor, it's not like it's not balloons like that, but it's more like oh, we have balloons. Oh, rectangle. Is it rectangles or balloons? I thought Let it was me go look real quick. Okay. Um, but here's what Yard Sale Treasure Map looks like. So we're we're here at Saturday, right? And it's Austin, Texas, and we see mm -hmm. freeways and I know where mm -hmm. my house is and everything. In fact, my house is right around this blue dot that is right around there. You can kind of see between the two sales. So one of the easiest ways to plan, if you don't have time to do manual searches on Craigslist, is to do Yard Sale Treasure Map, the app. It's a really easy app to get. just takes two seconds. Download your phone. Up here, you filter the days that you want to go hustling. So if I want to, whoops, if I want to do Saturday or Sunday or Friday or whatever, I'm going to put it to Saturday because that's tomorrow. Press Done. It'll show you all the Saturday sales around you. And then it's really important to go through all the ones in the neighborhoods that you deem good neighborhoods, right? Just to hit these little balloons. It'll bring up a thing that says yard sale like that. See that? And then I'm going to hit that. It's going to bring me to an ad, right? And this ad may or may not have pictures, but a lot of times the ad has descriptions of what's going to be there. In this particular sale, we have antiques, China, China and crystal sets, toys, furniture, 100, 100 brand new purses. Jeez. Um, <laughs> hockey gear, sports equipment, kids' electric car, clothes, firefighter equipment, antique pictures with nice frames and more. So when I look at an ad like this, what gets me going, for example, well, first of all, it's easy to do. So that's already amazing, right? It's on your phone. Mm -hmm. You could do this while <laughs> waiting at the DMV. I, I do this sometimes while I'm having a beer at a bar on a Friday night. Like I will do my <laughs> list while I'm drinking a beer at a bar. Like I'll just do it. Or if I'm just like at a really cool place in Austin and, you know, looking at a sunset, like, pff, okay, I'll just do this. Right? Um, so that's how easy this is. You don't need a laptop. You just need a phone. What gets me jazzed up about this one in particular? Uh, sports equipment. That's pretty cool. Um, firefighter equipment. That's kind of neat too because if it's all like completely yeah. destroyed firefighter equipment and it's like kind of retro or vintage, that's going to be perfect for a booth. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like that's just neat. So, um, and that's probably the only thing. Like I, I don't care about – do you care about 100 brand new purses, Tanya? No, I don't because like Jimmy said in the chat, they're probably all fake. <laughs> yeah, I know. A hundred brand new purses, you know that that's not going to be the good stuff. You just know it. It's just yeah. not. No. Um, what's cool about this ad, it says China and Crystal Sets toys, furniture. I love how vague toys are because a lot mm -hmm. of people can think toys, uh, you might find lightsabers in there. You saw my last video, lightsabers can bring some pretty mm -hmm. good money if you find the right ones. Toys could also mean video games. Some people and adults go oh, okay they got toys it's their nintendo that's their toy you know like yeah so you you might find crazy stuff like that so when you're looking through these things one of my people largest pieces of advice is the more specific something gets the less likely it is to be something good do you ever think about that tanya like do you know what i'm talking about that's a really good point like people really know what they have if they're going to give you all the specifics about exactly. it yeah that's true, that's true. um like I can just tell from this picture, I, I see an Alpine Stars chest protector and I see a, uh, a Fox helmet for a motocross. You know, like they they think that's yeah. a good picture to put. So this pro stuff, when you roll up to the garage sale, is probably going to be accurately priced because yeah, this true. is their lead picture. Like, mm -hmm. you know, anyway, <laughs> one of the best, some of the best, <laughs> how do I say it, uh, advice I can give you guys is go to places that have vague terms. That's yeah, really I agree. Important. Vague terms are great. Like my, one of my favorite ones that I've uh, taught to Eagle Eyes Nation, who's Q, one of my good <laughs> friends. Um, I remember when we were riding along one time, he was like, well, what made you come to this sale? It looks so stupid, you know? And I was like, it says household <laughs> items. And I was like, he was like, oh. And I was like, household items can be anything. <laughs> yes. Right? I mean, it, people could roll electronics into there. They can roll 
a KitchenAid mixer into that. They can roll a juicer into that. Just household items are so vague. Taxidermy, you know, yeah, anything. Like, that's just one of the best terms to look for anyway. So um, I love how people use that. Our sports sporting goods, like sporting goods could be anything. Like that's mm -hmm. super cool. So anyway, that's what that's kind of what's going on in my head when I'm prepping for garage sales. <laughs> Anyway, and go check out Eagle Eyes Nations too. I mean, Eagle Eyes Nation as well. Uh, very interesting concept. He's in the feed right now, but his concept is um, he does training for, I want to say eBay and probably other things down the road, but it's um, donation-based. If I'm not mistaken, he was on our show two weeks ago on a Wednesday. Check it out. His name is Q. He runs Eagle Eyes Nation, and he is in the feed right now. You can go <laughs> subscribe to his channel right from the feed. Mellow Jimmy from the feed, and I've hustled with him three times over. He is a Green Room member as well. Uh, a vague picture is money. Like if you spotted that helmet and boots in a pic of a bunch of random stuff. I like that. That's a good point. So, Tanya, what he's saying is if you saw these two pictures, but it was like a much larger picture, and you saw those two things like in the corner somewhere. Yeah. That's what he's I, saying. I'd be going to that one. <laughs> yeah, you'd be going to that one, right? Definitely. So, um, Anyway, so that's that's how yard sale treasure map kind of works. And you're using G Sailor, you said, right? Yeah, I really prefer that one over okay. uh, yard sale treasure map. Yeah. Do you have your phone nearby? I do, and you were right. It is the uh, little boxes. squares. Yeah, little squares, right? Show me a, a yeah. picture of um, what that looks like. Of the map, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... just bring it up to the com the, the camera, and let's just see. Uh, see it for a second. Uh, let me try and turn down the brightness. Okay, that's fine. I think it's just the way you angle the camera too. Like if you angle is the camera that, like this or like that. Yours looks a lot better than mine. Let's see. It's because I have the iPhone 7 Hustler Cheddar Edition right here. Oh um, yeah, I still have the 6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and put it up to the screen so we can kind of see. And you have to talk while you, while you do it too. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, I have to multitask. Yep. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the reason I like this one uh, is, see, I don't know. Dang it, I wish you guys could see. It has a little heart beside each garage sale that's listed. And I can touch those hearts, like the ones that I really want to hit up in the morning. And then I can go pull up my list and it will have all the ones that I've checked. This is something weird with this new MacBook I got. Every time I try and uh, show my phone, it never shows it. Yeah, I think it's because Cincinnati Picker says you have a screen protector um, that is causing a glare reflection. It's not a huge deal, but I think we well, we, we get the point. We uh, we see where you're going with that. So it is as good or better than Yard Sale Treasure Map. You like using that one, right? I do prefer it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you know there are two apps that you can use to make your planning simpler out there. It's very important that I think as a beginner or an intermediate that you at least get to know these two apps. Um, if you're a more expert level hustler and you want to, I think it's still good to do the app first and make your little list and then supplement it with Craigslist manual searching, um, which means get on a laptop, go to craigslist.com, go to your town, filter it down to Saturday or Friday, whatever day you want to hustle. And then mm -hmm. there's a search bar at the top and you can put in the search bar, you know, Nintendo, video games, bike, bikes, bicycle, bicycles. And you have to use plurals and singulars because Remember, if you're trying, if someone describes a sale with bicycles and you just put bike, you're not going to find it because that's not the keyword, right? right? So just remember, you have to be really specific with keywords. Um, okay, so I think we've pretty much, blow, you know, beaten that one to death. Um, <laughs> very easy to use, though. I mean, absolutely easy to use. They're yeah. in your car while you're hustling too, right, yes. Tanya? And as, I was just going to say, as a matter of fact, like I have a reminder set on my phone for Wednesday night about eight o'clock uh, that says check for garage sales. So, you know, I want to make sure I'm not going to miss any of those Thursday sales. So, you know, about Wednesday evening is when I start really taking a look at everything, make sure uh, there's not going to be any Thursday sales because sometimes those Thursday sales can be good. Okay. I usually in Austin, the Thursday sales are like estate sales, but you have garage yeah. sales on Thursdays and leaks. Yeah. City? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Man. <laughs> That's crazy. Like in Austin, I don't know what the deal was. Maybe everyone's working on a Friday morning. I don't know. Um, do people in League City work? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay. There's lots of stay-at-home moms, you know. <laughs> oh, I bet. Uh, but you're not a stay-at-home mom, right? This is what you – you like doing this. This is your – is this your full-time thing? It is, right? Yes? Yeah, but I mean, I'm also, yeah, stay-at-home mom. So, But my kids are older, like, you know, 14 and 9. So, uh, I'm, I, you know – they don't require a lot of, like a baby would, right? 
Right, right, right. I see. Yeah, and it can be incrementally harder. But then I, you know, I say that, and then we have people like Aisha in the green room. Yes. Who's got three kids or four kids, something like that. Three she or four is kids amazing. Who is doing all this stuff, storage auctions, like all in garage ceiling with the kiddos and with another green room member, Lee. Yeah. Nothing is going to slow her down. <laughs> Nothing slows us. So, you know, it really comes down to your attitude. How prepared are you? You know, and you'll, you'll learn through time, like what's working, what's not. You'll learn the neighborhoods. You'll learn, oh, that was really dumb for me to get gas, like, you know, during the best time of the day. Really dumb for me to be. And we've all done it. We've been in the, the line of Starbucks, <laughs> right, Tanya? And there's like five yes. or eight people in front of you and you're just waiting and you're constantly thinking like, I'm missing out on stuff, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that goes into our next section, which is like the day before, like how do you get prepped in your head to make money, all right? Mm -hmm. um, so the day before, I'm not going to go through, I'll go through what I do, but let's go through what you do the day before. Let's say Saturday, because that's the big one. So Friday, what goes on in your head, Tanya? What do you do the day before to get ready? Okay, well, I'm probably going to try and be in bed by, you know, 10 or 11 at the latest, since I'm going to be waking up really early. I want to make sure my phone is going to be 100% charged in the morning because lots of times I'm looking stuff up or making videos. So you want to make sure your phone is charged. Um, let's see. Uh, map it out like we just talked about. And also get a good breakfast, right? Not just any breakfast, something that's going to give you some energy. I always have my coffee and I have some water ready to go in the car before I even leave. Um, what else? That's all I can think of right now. So you treat it really seriously. Um, oh, yeah. I got a plan. Because <laughs> this is, you know, if you don't treat it, treat it seriously, what's the chances of you making that $200 and $300 off season? Does it go down pretty quick? Yep. Yeah. Definitely. So it goes down pretty quick. And, you know, if you're what I call in my uh, video, we call it, if you ever watch my videos, my brother and I, we call it dicking around, right? <laughs> if, you, uh, if you dick around too much, then uh you know that that comes with a cost right everything comes with a cost out there if you're yes. if your car wasn't gassed up appropriately now you're at a gas station and while you only might spend five or ten minutes getting gas that five or ten minutes can be the difference between you making 100 200 sometimes more yeah and not like it could be the difference that it, that could be it right there it could, i can tell you that there's certainly a positive correlation between not making money and standing in the starbucks line yep <laughs> <laughs> I mean, proven by the bona fide hustler. Uh, yeah. But yeah, absolutely proven. You know why? Because I've been there, right? Um, and it's a really bad idea, so don't ever do it. Um, but when I get the day before, what do I What do I kind of do? I, I clear my vehicle to make sure it has an adequate amount of space. And Tanya, you drive a forerunner. I drive a forerunner. Do you ever fold the seats down in the back? Like, oh, yeah. You do <laughs> okay. Definitely, especially when I'm taking stuff to the antique booth. Uh, the seats have to go down sometimes. Right. And a lot of times, if you're going to visit the booth on a Saturday, you're making sure this stuff is already tagged on a Friday. It's already in the... Do you put it in the car even before the Saturday morning? Um, I don't usually go up to the antique booth. I, whenever I go up there, um, I was going to say I don't usually go on a Saturday. I usually go on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. But um, yeah, Saturdays, I have done, like you've done in the past, like buy something at a garage sale and take it straight to the antique booth that morning. That's so cool. Uh, when you do that, that way you don't even have to worry about bringing it home. Just take it straight up there and get that money made even yeah. faster. I sold something the other day that finally sold my booth. Oh my God. I think it's safe to say that when you deal in an antique booth that you, there's a high propensity to find medium to long tail items, but that's a good thing to throw in your booth anyway, right? Yeah. Medium to long tail items that you paid basically nothing for that you can ask pretty crazy prices for. But like I said, they're medium or long tail, so it's not like you're going to get the fast turn. Now, there's certain things in Texas, and I know Tanya and I, we both have antique booths, but I think they're kind of different in a way. Mine sells a lot of boots. Mine sells a whole lot of Pearl Snap shirts. Mine sells a lot of T-shirts and vintage stuff. And I don't want to say stuff because that's so general, but like vintage T-shirts, vintage tank tops. Um, what about you, Tanya? Like, what is it? What's the big stuff in your booth? Um, well, of course, I have books and jewelry. Um, I have a lot of the, you know, just like knickknacks stuff. Uh, what do they call it? Bric-a-brac type mm -hmm. stuff. I really don't have a section devoted to clothing or shoes or anything like that. But I would like to, um, you know, experiment with the uh, Western shirts the way that you do. I think you make a really good profit on them. And also the snapback hats too. Oh, man, those are really, really, really. Yeah, I got some of those in there. 
That's good. So, you know, yeah, and it's easy to test out a lot of stuff in the booth because all you got to do is just go to a couple garage sales, go to the clothing racks, hey, you know, filter through through the post, pearl mm -hmm. snap section, see if you can find a decent one, not some buckle or BKE one or anything like that current day. You want to find like Levi's and, um, you know, all those other good brands. What's another one? Rock Mount, Levi's, Wrangler, there's a bunch yeah. of good brands that are even making present day shirts, but it's just the brand kind of makes you feel like it's taken back. Like even though they make current day Levi's, for example, or Wrangler, mm -hmm. they're still good enough to put in the booth. Like yeah. they just are. But like I wouldn't put a Massimo or yeah, right? a Great Land, <laughs> you know, like something from Target that you can buy right now. Like a Fate of Glory. Yeah, Fate of Glory. <laughs> Definitely don't want to put that in there. Um, but that's what got, does well in my booth. And I experiment with a lot of stuff in my booth. And the way, you know, over five or however many years I've had this booth, the way you figure out when, how some, if something is good selling in your booth is you have to take low, you have to take risks, right? You have to take these really yes. low, tiny, like tiny, tiny risks. Um, and so give some context back to this past week when I look at my roster of what sells every day, like on my booth, I finally sold this one long tail do you think six months is long tail or medium tail? What do you think for a, for a, a little child desk? What do you think, Tanya? For a child's desk, uh, I don't know. It might be right there in the middle. I mean, six yeah. months might be kind of pretty quick. I mean, really? Okay, I thought yeah. it was kind of long. Like, well, you, you gotta have the right person come through for something like exactly. That. And yeah. that's the toughest part is there has to be the perfect person that comes around to buy the student desk. So I finally sold one for sixty bucks that I bought for twenty or so. It took six nice. months to sell. I'm like, ugh. It's probably taking up a lot of space. Exactly. There you go. I was just about to say it. it's, <laughs> it's the space thing that really kind of irritated right. me. Like, um, so anyway, um, but yeah, other things in the booth that sell good. I mean, just, you, you know, your booth over time. And it's one of those things that when you go to a garage sale, it's smart to have avenues open to where you don't have to turn your back on certain things. And that's, what's yeah. good about having a booth. Um, that's, what's good about having eBay and Amazon. Like Tanya said with books, I mean, if you find a profitable book that's 25 cents that can sell for 10 or 20, like oh, do you yeah. get into those kind of things, 10 or $20 books that you can find for a quarter or less. Definitely. It's an easy flip. And you know, the smalls pay my rent for my antique booth. So yeah, definitely. Yep. <clears throat> um, okay. So other things that we, I do the day before we, ta we talked about what Tanya does the day before I get my vehicle space clear. Um, I fold my seats down because I can, um, <laughs> I get these little crates and you can get, I have these yeah. foldable crates that are black and they come from like the back of Whole Foods and stuff like that. I found them at a pick one day, like a long time ago. And the person was going to like, he had like 70 of these crates and all he's like, take all 70. I was like, absolutely not. I don't want them. <laughs> and I was like, I'll take like 10 of them. And I gave five to e-money and I gave five to myself and it was only like 15 bucks, but these crates are foldable ones. And I erect them when I want them to be you know, crates. And then when I'm not wanting to be crates, I'll just, you know, compress them and there they go. <laughs> I get gas from my car, right? That's important. Right. I make sure my, sure my car is all gassed up. So I might not get gas, but I make sure that it has an adequate amount of gas, at least yes. a half or more. Um, I make sure to set my alarm, like Tanya said. So you want to set your alarm on your phone. That's really, really important. Um, yes. I set a couple alarms. I'm going to make oh, yeah. sure I, I get I up. Like three. I have like three right now. I'm guilty oh, yeah. of the three alarm kind of thing. It really irritates my wife, actually. Um, yeah. But that's what it takes to get me up. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Um, and then I try to know my breakfast the night before I don't build it, but I try to like, okay, like, what am I going to get? Like that way I open the fridge. I'm like, I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna get the yogurt. I'm gonna get the banana. I'm like, okay. I'll mm -hmm. put it all together. And that's how I'm going to do it. Um, sometimes I'll lay out my clothes every now and then I'll just be like, all right, that's <laughs> the shirt so I'm wearing. Organized. It just I'm not, I said sometimes and not all the time, but <laughs> sometimes I will lay out the clothes every now and then. But you gotta understand it's like, it's hot in Texas. So like laying out clothes might be like, I know my flip flops are at the door. Um, right. You know, yeah. I mean, I here's a t-shirt right yeah. by my bed and here's a pair of shorts right by my bed and there's a hat <laughs> right there. That's the three things I put on real quick. I zoom out the door, you know? Yes. So it's not, uh, you don't ever want to look rich when you're in a garage sale, right? Yes. And I was going to talk about that. So <laughs> go yeah. ahead. Okay. So I don't carry any of my designer bags with me when I go garage selling. I just carry a basic small little purse and it's actually, um, the crossbody kind that you can put over you because, I want my hands to be free so I can be looking at stuff. You know, I carry, um, I carry my loop and then I even have a magnet, uh, a stronger magnet, like right here on my key ring so I can test for gold and silver um, out in the field. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to wear a lot of uh, fancy jewelry. Um, what else? You can't help the car that you pull up in though, right? <laughs> too, too bad we don't have like a little clunker car we could just like drive around to garage sales. <laughs> 
you need to pick the worst of the two cars that you own, right? If you have a spouse or girlfriend or whatever, just like, or a boyfriend, you know, just be like, if the boyfriend's car or the spouse's car is worse, then just pick that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, there's a good point, you know, Eagle Eye is an interesting Q in the feed. We all know Q. You've met, have you met Q in real life, Tanya? No, I haven't. He just joined the green room this year, right? Uh, uh within a year. I think he's been in for a year. Okay. He's awesome. Like Q is really good. I've hustled with him three times. Every now and then, one of the times I put it on the video, like I was just hustling out in the field and I was having all this fun. And then I just bumped into him like randomly. I was like, yeah you want to come hustle with me? Like I've done it with Brock and I've just been, I was like, all right, we just switch cars right there in the neighborhood. And, uh, I usually put them in my car, but you know, it's just one of those, I, I, it's fun to be around people, right? It's fun to be around, especially like-minded people. So green room is right. definitely a good place for that. Um, definitely. but I like Q because he's got a really open mind and he has a lot of good avenues open and he's smart. He's, a yeah, really he's smart got a great guy. attitude and he's really funny too. Yeah, he's funny. Uh, he does videos. So go check out his Eagle Eyes Nation thing. And then also check out the Facebook group that's tied to that YouTube account. You definitely want to go check it out. So um, I left off with Know Your Breakfast and all that kind of stuff. I wonder if I forgot some stuff. I bet you, Tanya, that even us as I would like to call ourselves like expert garage dealers, not being cocky or anything. Like we've done it for such a long time. Like we know what right. we're doing, right? Yep. So we're experts. Let's just face it. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying, guys. Um, did we miss anything? Like, what do you guys do out there in the feed the day before? Like, how do you get prepped? And I want to read out a couple of responses uh, that come through. We have 94 people watching right now. Hey, all you 94 people, I hope you are subscribed to Tanya's channel. It's the first link down below. All right. She's coming out. With, she, she comes out with content all the time. She's coming out with content. She, you upload all the time. <laughs> um, I try. <laughs> and you're recently getting into some of this live stuff too, right? Yes, I have been um, trying to do a live show at least once a week. Um, you know, my goal is to bring good content to other resellers and to help to educate uh, the newbies as well. And also on a personal level to conquer my fears and kind of just do that live show. And I mean, I'm, I do live shows like with Deb on the reseller stew and here with you now, but when it's, it's totally different when you're running the whole thing all by yourself, right? right. Because you know, you got to keep the conversation going, you know, with no dead, what do they call it? Dead air. Dead space. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Um, you mentioned um, the show that you are part of weekly, right? So weekly, it's the reseller yes. stew. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and tell people how they can link up with you because now you are part of, I want to say three, is it April, you and Deb primarily? Uh-huh. And Yvonne. And, then, and Yvonne. There's one more, right? Yes. Okay. So you guys can connect with Tanya further throughout the week. You can subscribe to her channel, but she also does a live show that's on Deborah's channel. Am I right about that? Yes. Tuesdays okay. at noon. Tuesdays at noon central Texas time, which is the best time of all. If you don't know Texas, Texas time, yes. Yeah, this is the best <laughs> this is the best time zone. Don't don't fool yourself, guys. Um right. But so yeah, you can go check her out on that show. Uh, it's a live show. It's primarily run by Deb, but you are there, right? Yes, I am. And Super then, fun. Yeah, it's a fun show. I, I try to echo in when I can. Um, I'm always usually eating something when I see it. I don't know why. It's lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> it's lunchtime. There you go. Okay, now I know. <laughs> um, so I'm going into the feed right now, and I ask people, what else did we miss? And this is a good one because this is really obvious, and I'm surprised that not one of us said it, but this is so obvious. I should have read it, written it down. You missed it, Tanya. Okay, let me guess. Expert. Is it what cashed? Is it? You, cashed? You looked at the feed. I it did is it. cashed. <laughs> Get your cash denominations right. I wrote it down. It's on my list. I promise. Oh, yes. you're right. Um, carry small bills, right? Because yes. you don't want to be hustling with somebody and you know get them down to two dollars and then you hand them a twenty. <laughs> you know that's not going to fly. But I do keep yeah. big bills too, just in case you know I come across that mother load. You never know. True. But definitely some small bills. So big bills for the mother load, small bills for the smaller type things. Um, and she right. said. You don't want to be putting up a 20 for a $2 item. There's a, I'll tell you why. First of all, it's goofy <laughs> as hell. It looks super stupid. But the right. most important thing is you might not get the item because they might not have change. Yes. First thing in the morning, <laughs> a lot of um, yeah. people run the sales don't have a lot of change. Yeah. Tell me how many times that works out. Like for a dollar item or a $5 item, you throw 20 forward on the first thing in the morning. They're going to be like, oh, hold on. Let me get change or, uh, you know, my husband's coming back with change. Yeah. And, and then you got to stand around and exactly. wait. And no. No. That's why you have to have small bills. 
Let me ask you, do you ever go around with quarters in your pocket? I don't, but like, do you? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I usually have bills. The only quarters I'll have is like, if I pay, uh, give them a dollar for something that costs a quarter, then I might have, you know, some change in my little purse, but yeah. It's a fantastic question. And it in from Tom Wen. How much do you bring to garage sales with you? Let's say off season, Tanya. Off season? Um, off season, I might have uh, $20 in small bills and then maybe $40 back up, like, uh, you know, for the mother load. <laughs> okay. Um, so it just depends, right? It depends on what's around you, right? Um, the opportunity. Yeah. Thing. On Definitely. peak season, I would I will roll around with pretty extensive, pretty decent like roll, you know. Um, on non-peak season, I think somewhere between for me in Austin, two to three hundred is usually what I like kind of roll around with, you know. That's off um, season. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, you don't yeah, play, be, huh? <laughs> well, it's just that there's a lot of also like local hustle stuff that's really good opportunity, but sometimes you have to get into it for you know forty bucks a bike, sixty dollars a bike. There was a what is the video that we just, sh you'll be seeing it soon, but there's a bike that we buy for 70 bucks, right? It was the first thing in the morning, like 70 bucks, boom, gone. Um, so we do that. There used to be like in peak season, peak being like crazy in Austin, Texas. Um, I try like somewhere north of like 500, but like a lot of small bills, like a ton, right? Because there's a really high chance of mother load type of stuff in peak season. Um, and then I also do some kind of fun stuff where, and it worked last weekend for us, where sometimes you, you got to ask about some of the stuff that you're seeing in the garage that might not be for sale, right? And um, just act confused. Be like, oh, uh, is this for sale? And uh, you clearly know that it's not, but just be like, is that for sale? And, you know, 90% of the time they're going to say, no, you know, it's not for sale. But sometimes, sometimes, and it's a really quick statement. Like, is that for sale? Would you sell the bikes? Would you sell that? Last weekend for us, it was like, is this for sale? And we were pointing to a wakeboard. And the lady's like, oh, it's not part of the sale, but it can be, you know? <laughs> and that's exactly what my brother and I wanted to hear, you know? Right. Is that's, that gives you guys an opportunity, number one. And then after that, the opportunity comes down to negotiation, yeah. um, which we'll talk about on another show. That's a totally different topic. Negotiating mm -hmm. is, is it daunting, Tanya, or is it scary or no? Not anymore. I mean, maybe, you know, initially in the beginning, but not anymore. You know, I don't really care. I can take it or leave it. Uh, you know, I just, I wouldn't let on how, how strongly I really wanted it if I'm haggling, right? Right. Yeah. So haggling is definitely haggling. Ooh, that, <laughs> that word is so weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Uh, I guess negotiating. Um, yeah, negotiating. I think I'm, I'm a country girl, Chris. Come yeah, on. Haggle, yeah, haggle. Yeah, haggle. <laughs> haggle. That's what my mom used to say back in the day. Okay, stop it. You're making me feel old. No, no, no. no. Like <laughs> she, she would, she would say that. And when I think of haggling, I think of like, for some reason, I think about this. Uh, there's this like character on Sesame Street. Is like this big kind of woolly mammoth looking thing. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know if that's Sesame Street. The elephant looking. Character? Yeah, the elephant looking thing. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's like really like it's really dirty looking and everything, but. <laughs> It just looks like it's just haggling around. Like that's what I would always think when I hear haggling. Like I think about this like mammoth he's, thing, right? He's that's lollygagging. What he's that's what he's oh, doing. Oh, that's what he's doing. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> um, so yeah, this basically we're, we're almost at the end. We're pretty much at the end of the show. I didn't want to like kind of zoom into more stuff about garage sales because I wanted to keep the show highly organized and show you guys the planning aspect of it and why it's really important to plan your sales. Tanya, it's it, it, it's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely the difference. Whether you live in Lake City or Austin, Texas or anywhere on the nation, I mean, planning, no one gets amazing results accidentally all the time. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. Yeah. You get amazing results all the time if you plan. That's just the way it is. Yeah. I mean, if you get amazing results by, ac by accident all the time, I want to know who you are. Let's interview you for a show because that's just... Right. That I've never come across a single person that just kind of falls into amazing luck all the time. Like it just doesn't exist. Right. Um, yeah, well, I was going to say something else real quick. Also let your friends know what you do. Let them know that you uh, like to go to the garage sales and estate sales because there might be something going on that um, you don't know about or see in the apps and, or even better, they might know the person who's running it and you might even get to go early and check everything out before other people get there. Yeah, there's some there's all kinds of tactics you can do to even try to snipe the sales. What I like to do, if you want to get into sniping really good, and this is kind of bleeding into maybe the next show, which is like 
what's the first step, you know, what's the first step in negotiating and how do you become the first in line and how can you beat people out? Um, one of the best ways that I've found out recently of recent, like in the past six months is to use this app called next door. Because on next door, it shows you, and you get to pick however many neighborhoods you want to see around your immediate hood, okay? Mm -hmm. So if I filter down to three, it's going to get the three closest to me. But if I, when I filter for to 15 now or something like that, I get 15 neighborhoods that are really, really close to my house, okay? Um, and some might share the same zip code too. But these neighborhoods are talking on next door, and you can decide what you want to hear, what you don't want to hear. Like, I don't want to hear any more like, I lost my pet. Like, I don't care about those anymore. <laughs> or uh, someone took down, you know, someone, you know, uh, I, I keep up the crime ones for some reason. I want to see those. Uh, <laughs> when people get their cars broken into or like, why is the freaking police chopper flying around in circles above our hood? Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Something like that. I want to see that one. Right. Um, it's kind of fun. <laughs> the other one I check out is the classifieds one. I make sure to get highlighted with the classifieds one because that's where all the garage sale stuff and the items go. And items can be bikes. They can be, oh, here, free lamp for pickup. Anyone wants it. And if you're fast, and it's faster than, it's not faster than mm -hmm. Craigslist because you know when something's free on Craigslist, like you are probably not going to get it. Like it's that fast. Yeah. But on next door, you have a pretty good chance, like a really, really, really good chance. Um, and people are letting go of all kinds of stuff. Like I, low, I didn't lowball, but like, Someone had like a sealed PlayStation VR thing, like the most current thing where the goggles and the two little sticks and you run around getting scared, you know? Um, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like 500 bucks at Best Buy. And this person's like, oh, it's brand new. I never opened it uh, 450. And I was like, and I offered her 350 and she never got back to me. And I don't even know if she sold the thing. But that's the kind of stuff you can do there real quick. And like, I looked at all the responses to her ad and there was just like none. So I was like her only hope if she wanted to move that thing. So there's a lot of cool things about Nextdoor. So check out that app. It looks like, let me put it up, pull it up real quick on my iPhone. Um, it's sitting right here. I have it next to Flickster and next to Amazon Prime Video. It's this guy right there. It looks like a little house. It's green. And it says next door. Anyway, when you get into it, it looks like this. And then here's what it's showing me. I think this is a fantastic app. So, oh, here's someone that just saw a Chupacabra. So I don't know what? why that's in there. No, I swear. <laughs> this person says... I just saw a chupacabra. Well, not really, but it looked like one. It was walking. I was walking my dog where Great Hills Park comes out to the cul-de-sac. This hair, this skinny, hairless dog-like thing came out of the woods and stood on the trail. It was about forty or fifty pounds. It's really wiry. I have no pics. I wasn't fast enough to to do the draw on my iPhone. I didn't also want to get too close while watching my dog. This thing looked super sketchy and wild. It was hairless, like a hyena with alopecia. alopecia. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. <laughs> with angry little tufts of hair and a pointy little mole rat face. Angry tufts of hair? <laughs> it was mostly gray and blotches of brown. This person's a it writer. Looked, <laughs> I know. What was this thing? Anyone else has seen it? And then the replies say, I don't know, but that was really funny. I needed a good excuse not to start my walking routine again. Thank you. <laughs> and then that's a really good description. So, okay. So let's talk about uh, what you can find here. Garage sale Sunday. Garage sale Sunday, 430. Here we go. Here's Sunday. one right here. Wow. Yeah. Garage sale Sunday. I go into it, for example, and this one is describing a lot of stuff. You know, I have electronics ranging from Mac desktop computer to studio stereo unit, plenty of kids' toys, children's books and games, don't miss it out, adult clothes for men, Sunday 430. So if I see something that's on here, like, for example, children, books, and games, I could reply back to this person and say, what exactly did you mean by children's games? Like, what if that's video games, right? So yeah. you can do these kind of things and be proactive and get kind of like the jump on. Uh, every time that I try to get the jump on, they always respond like, hey, yeah, when can you, when can you come by? Yeah. Every time. Because they know I'm part of like this close hood. So it's one of the things, you know, this is kind of like your big secret tip of the day. Besides join Tanya's channel and check it out. <laughs> the other secret tip is like get on next door, okay? Um, whew, I have mine filtered to 43 neighborhoods around me. I thought it was wow. 15. It's 43. <laughs> That's a lot. Damn, man. That's a lot of chupacabras. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're all walking around. Um, ready to take my money. Um, right. but yeah, so check out that app. Uh, all fun and games aside, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the broadcast. Um, and look for, for, forward for the next one, maybe on next Friday. We'll talk about a little bit more negotiating stuff and types of items that you really want to, like best bang for your buck type stuff to look for. Maybe we'll have Tanya on the feed as well. But Tanya, you got any last words for the feed? Um, no, let's see. Set your alarms because tomorrow's Saturday. 
Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so she reiterated, set your alarm the day before. Do you got do your homework? Uh, take some time. Make it fun. Like, don't sit there and go, oh, this is a chore. I got to plan my garage sale day out. This is the difference between making money and not making money. The planning. It's all in the planning, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Make sure to subscribe to Tanya's channel down below. And we will see you on the next hangout here on Friday. We'll talk garage sales next Friday, I promise. I'll see you guys later. Bye.